So, hello everybody. Here we are back again with Alone on Halloween by Pagan Publishing. And we are going to move over to item number 236. We were just back from the um, dream world and we have not suffered any um, sanity loss, uh, thank God. Um, we were quite lucky there. Um, <clears throat> So let's look at number 236. You pull yourself to your feet, head still spinning and frantically search the ballroom for a sign, any sign of Corey. Attempt a spot hidden roll. So I'll just get to get my dice. Um, here we are. Let's see if we can find dear Corey. Um, my spot hidden is 45. And with a 27, we are successful and we go to, first of all, we record our journalism point. We are now at um, 239. Beneath a dusty chair, you find Corey's watch, the crystal front shattered. There obviously was a struggle, but what became of your friend? To search the manor house, go to 228. To leave without your companion, go to 232. Well, of course, we cannot just leave Corey to, to his fate. We need to, we are heroes. We're going we're gonna to investigate this. So let's go to 228. Um, 15, 17. 228. Searching the manor house. <clears throat> the von Reicht manor consists of three floors plus the cellar and a tower shown on the map on the inside back cover. Uh... Ah, here we are. Okay, inside back cover. Okay, now this is logistically a bit difficult. Oh my word. This is huge. To search the manor house, go to the paragraph number shown in the room or area you wish to enter. Always return here to search further. Mark off a box on the timetable on the inside front cover for every room you explore. At midnight, go to 647. Okie dokie. So how this works is um, there is a timer in this game. And this timer um, essentially, if I can find it, it allows for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So <clears throat> we have 31 time in increments to search the manor and each room takes one time increment so i'm going to make a note here 31 time increments <clears throat> so let's let's read this paragraph um you are now in the ballroom um which is 228 i hope i can find 228 on the map um ground floor oh i'm over here okay i found myself that's always good um you may search the rooms and chambers in any order you like although you should keep to some sort of order and not jump from floor to floor to floor you are now on the timetable each room you search will take 10 minutes one spot on the timetable the timetable appears on the inside front cover moving from one floor to another and the long halls costs no time and moving from floor to floor may be done via the stairs or the elevators that are found around the manor house if an elevator or staircase open into a room and not a hall, you must go to the appropriate room paragraph and read it just as though you had picked that room to investigate, marking off the time on the table, etc. Doors are unlocked unless otherwise noted. <coughs> <coughs> the appropriate paragraphs for each room are indicated by the number in each room on the house floor plan map. In certain instances, there will be a number in a section of hall. When you pass by this area, go to the paragraph noted. Once you have checked off the last spot in the timetable, go to 647, unless you are involved in combat. If so, go to that paragraph as soon as combat is completed, unless, of course, you are killed. You may at any time decide to abandon your search and flee the house, in which case you go directly to, three, two, to 232. 
In most cases, there are no trace numbers for the manor house room, so you must keep track of yourself of where you have been and what chambers you wish to explore. Items that you find in rooms that are meant for you to take or use will be identified as such. You may now begin your desperate search for your friend and companion. You are at 228. Okay, so essentially how I'm going to play this is that, of course, you can only move to adjacent um, places. So from 228, we could go to 240. No, we can't, actually. We can go to a hall and then from there to 241, which is going to cost us one time increment. Okay, so we'll see what we can do here. <clears throat> um, 241. As you open the door to this chamber, you can't help but notice the um, notice how damp and humid the air is, with an almost salty smell. As you ease yourself in, as you ease yourself in, you discover the source of the dampness. A huge slime-covered pool fills the room. Thick black and bilious algae and seaweeds float on the stagnant water, and the once delicate and beautifully tiled floor is buckled and cracked. Foul-scented water trickles from the walls and ceiling. You may attempt either a listen roll or a spot hidden roll in this room. Okay, uh, well, actually, I would love to just run because that doesn't bode well. Let's just do a spot hidden because we are better at spot hidden. And we fail. Um... Okay, so we are in for 241. We fail. We go to 251. Um, 251 is over here. Let's see <clears throat> what this tells us. 251. Cautiously. Well, actually, no. I was trying to run away. Cautiously. But curiously, you edge closer to the thick disease infested water all is still and quiet then suddenly a scaled bloated tentacle horror rises um, with a hiss from the dark water make a sand roll my sanity is 65 so okay we lose our sanity roll um and lose 1d8 points We lose two, but we are going to sacrifice ten of our um, investigate uh, ten of our journalism points. Well, actually, we're going to sacrifice twenty to take no sanity loss. <clears throat> um. The octopoidal monstrosity lashes out at you with a rubbery tentacle and has a 40% chance of hitting. You may attempt to dodge out of the way of the creature. Um, dodge. 26. Forty-seven. Okay, so if it has a 40% chance of hitting, then I need to roll more than 40 for it not to hit. Okay, it doesn't hit. Um, if you are struck by a tentacle, go to two, 3 to 2. If the beast misses, you may escape by fleeing the room and counting yourself lucky. Return to the map. Yes, we're totally going to do this. We're going to add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points and... Um, we are now at 2 cm and we have <coughs> one increment used so we are now at 30 increments so um, we are in room 241 and from there we are going to go to 289 There's actually quite a lot of record keeping in this game. 289. P 
Peering through the glass doors of this room, you see that it is a once opulent greenhouse room. The doors squeak and groan as you swing them in and enter the chamber. Rain pours in through the ma many broken and missing panes of glass in the roof. A set of double doors lead from the room out into the backyard. Many twisted and odd forms of vegetation grow within the soil of the floor or hang creepily from cracked hanging pots and baskets that dangle precariously from the ceiling. The plants are the most unusual you've ever seen, many with strange foliage and colours. Plants with yellow thorny vines and grey flowers twist and creep alone, along the broken bricks of the floor, while stiff, sharp red sword-like leaves with pink warts sprout up out of the floor. An odd black foliaged growth is thriving hanging from the roof, its green fibrous roots dug right into the glass. The whole room is a bizarre sight. You may attempt either a botany roll, which is certainly not going to happen because botany is not something that I have any points in, or spot hidden. And we manage the spot hidden roll. Woohoo! So, um, first of all, we get two journalism points. One, two. We lose one time increment, 29. And we go to 280. Um, as, you sp as you poke about in this room, you spot some sort of movement from the yard. To leave the house and investigate, go to 587. Oh, uh, do we want to do this? <clears throat> you know what? I won't. Because this is, we, we, we're supposed to search the house. We can always try and get back. So we're now going to go to room 250, which is across the hall from where we are now. So across the hall from the conservatory thing. Um, you instantly recognize this room as the kitchen. Um... Dirt and long curtains of dust shroud everything and delicately drape alike fine lace between pieces and furn of furniture. Ew. Uh, you may try either an idea roll or a spot hidden roll in this room. <coughs> we're going to try idea. And we're successful with a zero nine. First of all, we get one journalism point. Flop. And we are going to... Um, we're now in 250... We are down one time increment at 28. And we are going to go to 315. And 315 tells us what exactly. Other than the dust, you get the idea that nothing is unusual about this room. Thanks for telling me that. I feel so much better. Um, <coughs> so 250. Um, so let's see what we can do. We can leave, we can go to 344, which is probably the pantry, but we're going to go there anyway. 344. The door is locked. You must succeed with a mechanical repair roll or match your strength against the door's strength which has a strength of 1d6 plus 6. Uh, it's got a strength of 10. So my strength is uh, 13, 15. Okay, so we're going to try this out. Um, we're going to re resort to the table. Um, so we have 15 against 10. We need a 75 or less and we succeed um, we go to 341 and this takes us one two and we lose one time increment 29 uh, 27 341 The door creaks loudly open to reveal the kitchen pantry shelves. No, actually we don't because I just, but let's see. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. The door creaks loudly open to reveal the kitchen pantry shelves lined with assorted canned and boxed goods take up most of the space in this large closet. 
You may attempt either a pharmacy roll or a spot hidden. Um, spot hidden. So 83. I basically only see um, the back of my hands. Um, we return to 344. From which place we can go to 355, which is a hall. Um... No, 3.54, I lie. And 3.54 tells us... <clears throat> As you wander through the eerie, lonely hall, make a spot hidden roll. 39, we pass. So... We are now 26 and 3.54 and we go to 3.84. And 3.84, the glint of something metallic catches your eyes as you pass by a small stand in the hall. Stooping down closer to examine the sparkle, you find Corey's ring. This gives you new hope of finding your companion. To continue searching the house, simply go on to your next room choice or, or to leave the house and search the yard outside, go to 5.87. They're really pushing this goal outside the yard. One, two, three, four, five. <coughs> um, okay, so from where we are, we can now go to two, five, six. And we are now time increment 25. Two, five, six gives us two, five, six. Da, da, da. Let's see. Two five six. The double doors to this room wearily grown open to reveal a spacious living room complete with a dust shrouded furnishing. This room, once opulent, now stands in near ruin, a victim of time and of time and neglect. You may attempt either a listen roll or a spot hidden. Let's go with spot hidden because we suck at listening. Um, now if I can find those pesky dice, here we are. Um. 53, I don't think that's enough. No, it's not. We don't see anything. Um, uh, fail and return to the map. Okay, so we are 256. We can now go to 374, which we will do. We're still on the first floor, by the way. Nothing has changed yet. We are not um, anywhere else in the house. And I'm running out of desk space. Actually, this is this is a lot. Um, this has a large footprint, so we go to three seven four. The warped and buckled double doors crack open loudly, stirring up a grey cloud of dust that spins cy cyclone-like off into a shadowy corner of the room. As you cautiously step into the room, you discover that you have found the library. Towering cases and countless shelves line the walls, all packed with books. A once beautiful oriental rug smothers the dull hardwood floor and is held in place by majestic bulky oak furniture. Stubs of candles tell of constant use by some unknown reader. You may try any one of the following skill rolls. Going to the noted paragraph is successful. Note that one you may attempt any of the other skill rolls, but you must mark off a space on the timetable for each attempt. Successful or not. Okay, we're at 374 now. 
So at time increment 24. So we can do one. <clears throat> what have we got? Anthropology. Nope. Archaeology. Nope. Astronomy. Ten. Botany. Nope. Cthulhu Mythos. Nope. History. N uh, no. Occult. No. Zoology. Uh, well, I'm not doing so well, so let's take the one that I do have, that's uh, astronomy, and hope for a good roll, which means less than 10. And of course I fail. Um, so nothing happens, so we can now go to time increment 23 and move to some place else, essentially. So um, let's, let's see where we can go. Um... Three forty six. M one journalism point at least three forty six. Let's see. Ah, with a weak moan, the door opens into the parlor. Once beautiful furniture rests peacefully against the walls. An old grandfather clock stands silently in at attention, the hands frozen in time forever. You may attempt either a history or spot hidden roll in this room. Spot hidden. 56, we lose. Um, I suck at this game. Um... Three, four, six. From here we can go to two, seven, one. You slowly crack open the door and peer in. Two, seven, one. Time increment 22. You slowly crack open the door and peer in. This is a billiards room, obvious from the huge billiards table that stands heavily in the center of the floor. An ornate fireplace decorates one wall. The stonework is adorned with fiercely snarling and ugly faces and creatures. You may attempt any of the following. Occult, pow times five, or spot hidden. Let's see, pow times five would be 50, 65. Let's do this. We are successful. Um, we rolled a 10. Um, and in order to... 271. So first of all, we get two journalism points. One, two... And then we go to 269. You wander closer to the towering fireplace, examining the stonework. Without warning, a fire bursts to life from cold ashes within the long dormant fireplace. As you back away, you catch a glimpse of movement from the corner of your eye. Above you, one of the stone gargoyles stiffly begins to move. Great! With a rumbling crack, one of the winged statues breaks itself free from the stonework, tumbling to the floor not far from your feet. Make a sanity roll. 71, we fail. And we take 1d8. Um, sand damage. We take three points. And we're going to negate 1, 2, 3. Three. We're going to negate all three because while we still can, we should. Um, to your terrified surprise, the living statue begins to lumber towards you. The gargoyle has a 35% chance to hit you. Once it has successfully struck, it will hang on, doing 1d8. Okay, let's see. It fails. The creature has 
2d8 plus 4 hit points and 3 points of armor against sharp-edged cutting and impaling type weapons. If you wish to flee the room, you must successfully make a dodge roll. If you fail to roll the roll or intend to battle animated stone figure, the animated stone figure then, note that the gargoyle always attacks last and has 3d6 pow. No sound or int effe affecting spells will work against this thing. If you have no weapon, a luck roll will allow you to find a makeshift club. <coughs> Okay, I can either try and run with a successful dodge roll or I can battle it. Okay, uh, am I battle? I've got a bat <clears throat> and I'm better at batting than I am at running. So let's try this. And I, oh, I critically hit zero two. Okay, so um, in this case, I have no idea what happens, um, but I do 1d8 plus, plus 1d4, and I don't know how this works, but I'm going to do critical hit means I do twice the damage. So I do 9 points of damage and 6, that's 15, 17 points of damage, and this guy has... So I do 17, make a note, 17. And this guy has 2d8 plus four hit points. So that's three, nine plus four is 13. I kill it. Now that was successful, woohoo. Well, I'm really, really happy. So I get four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Um. If you manage to destroy the magical creature, give yourself 1d8 sand and return to the map. Well, we have no sanity loss, so we're fine. Now, that was that was bracing. I'm very happy about this. Um, <clears throat> so we are in three in 271. Um, we can now do 343. Three. And we're at time increment 21. 343. Three. Um, the door groans slowly open to reveal a lounge complete with overstuffed furniture and faded moth-eaten carpets. On the walls hang several very old paintings of people, the paint faded and cracked with age. You may attempt either an idea roll or spot hidden roll. Succeed with the idea roll. Let's try this um, because our idea rolls are usually much better than our everything else rolls. Um, 60, 56, yes, we succeed. One journalism point. And we go to 335. Three, Examining the paintings closer, you suddenly realize that you have seen those faces before. They are O'Brien and Miss Quinn. The paintings were signed by the artists in 1783. Okay, that's interesting because um, because those are those are just the flunkies. I would have expected maybe pictures of the of of, of the law, his lordship and her ladyship, but no, it's the it's the servants. That's that's strange. So um, we'll see. Um, we need to return to the map from three four three. We can go to two five five. Time increment 20. Opening the door, you see that you have found the conservatory. The air is still and heavy with dust, and as you walk along the moth-eaten carpet, small clouds of dirt and dust billow up. You may attempt either a listen roll or a spot hidden roll. We know already that I can't spot anything, but we'll try anyways. 65, I see nothing. Um, fail and return to the map. Mm. 
255 331 <clears throat> Slowly, the once ornate age-worn doors slide open, allowing a clear view of the den from where you stand. The most outstanding sight in the room is a large stone bust of an unnamed, unidentifiable man perched on a high pedestal. That's odd. He may attempt either a geology roll or spot hidden roll. Well, I don't do geology. I'm, I don't know what I'm actually studying. I'm a classicist, but I have zero knowledge of anything relevant. Um, spot hidden. Ooh, ooh, I may have succeeded. What is my spot hidden again? Yes. Um, three, three, four. Rotating the bus reveals a secret door. To enter the secret passage, go to three, five, five. Of course, we will go to. To the. Two, three, five. Now the question is, do we lose time for this? I say we do. Eighteen, three, five, five. You step into the dark passage. Roll 1d6. Six. Six. Um, go to 271. You slowly crack open the door and peer in. This is a billiards room. Obviously, oh grace, we're again in the, in the um, billiards room. Okay. So um, from the billiards room, we are now going to go to, who's, where's the, oh, wow. It's interesting. Okay, we're going to go to 379, time increment 17. As you enter this large open foyer, roll 1d10. Nine. Uh, go to 375. What you thought was an odd noise turns out to simply be your over overactive imagination. You sigh in relief and continue your search. Return to the map. Great. So we're now going to go to the first floor and I'm going to leave it there. Um, so we're going to go upstairs and we're going to explore the second floor in our next installment. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.